embedding walls are structural compression elements that may be subject also to auto plane wind pressures. So they create bending about the weak axis. The walls are normally a very slender element, so the design is further complicated by the fact of the slenderness effect needs to be considered in the design. But how do you calculate the axial, the shear and bending stresses along the wall? How do you design the wall? How do you determine the thickness of the wall? And how do you calculate the rebars that are required in the wall? This is Javier Encinas. And today we're going to discuss the design of bearing walls when subject to gravity loads and aeroplane wind loads. Let's get started. The typical loads in a bearing wall are the gravity loads, dead and live, from the roof or from the structural floors. Usually these gravity loads are placed eccentrically with respect to the center line of the wall. This occurs, for example, in a warehouse type building, where a series of uh, joists are resting directly on the wall. Or, for example, in a precast uh, building, where a series of double T members are resting also on a hunch uh, on one side of the wall. So the loads are uh, eccentrically placed on the wall. If, in addition, the wall is subject to uh, wind pressure, then the resulting moments will add up. Normally, a bearing wall is resting directly on the footing, so this base is considered pin. This is a typical wall with a gravity load placed eccentrically on one side of the wall. This diagram represents the idealization of the structure. The wall is designed as a simply supported beam, pin at the bottom and pin at the top. The wall is subject to a gravity load placed eccentrically and it's also subject to a wind pressure. This diagram represents the bending moment due to the eccentric gravity load, maximum at the top and zero at the bottom. And this diagram represents the bending moment due to the wind pressure on the wall. Please note that the worst condition occurs when uh, the wind pressure is negative, so a suction. So the two bending moments are up in the design. There are three methods in the ACI code to design bearing walls. One is uh, the, the application of the provisions for columns. This method doesn't have any limitations in the application, but it's also the most difficult method to, to apply. The second method is the empirical design method. It has some limitations regarding the slenderness. The third method is the alternate design method, which uh, also includes some limitations. It's applicable to simply supported walls with uh, maximum bending moment at, this, at the mid-height of the wall. So the second and the third methods are simplifications of the first uh, method. As the concrete uses the first method uh, and applies all the provisions for the columns, including the slenderness effects. As deep concrete includes the design of bearing walls subject to gravity loads and also to outer plane uh, wind pressures. I have prepared an example to illustrate the engineering background behind the software. This is a one-story uh, bearing wall, which is 16 feet high. It has also a parapet, 2 feet high. We go to the loads tab, we can see the gravity loads. It's a series of concentrated loads of uh, 4 kips. They are placed with an eccentricity of 4 inches with respect to the center line of the wall. And the spacing between concentrated loads is 48 inches. So this represents either a series of joists or a series of double T beams supported on the wall. The program generates the shear diagram, the bending moment diagram, and also the axial diagram. And it's sorted by load combination. So we can uh, select any load combination that we want and will be shown there. In this case, the controlling load combination is regarding the wind. For example, if we model a two-story wall, the program generates the diagrams accordingly. The walls are slender elements, so the slenderness effects need to be considered in the design. If we go to the loads tab, we can see here show parameters for the second order moments. We can see here how the program calculates the magnification factors for every load combination. So the program calculates the magnification factor here in this column, and these are the magnified moments using the design. Please note that the magnification factor cannot be more than 1.4, which in this case we are complying with that requirement. 
So the maximum is 1.38. So all these moments are correctly calculated and will be used in the design of the wall. If we go to the at a glance tab, we can see here the amplified factor moments per load combination and also the wall strength. In this table, we compare the maximum uh, factor moment per load combination and the design flexural capacity, and it passes in, in, in all cases. If we go to the condensed tab, we can see a more detailed set of calculations, also the tables, including so the table showing the factor uh, amplified moments and the wall strength calculation. And here the interaction diagram generated by the program. We go to the detail tab, we can see a set of step-by-step uh, -step calculations with exposed formulas with amplified factor loads. Here's the calculation of the wall strength. And graphically we can see the generated interaction diagram. Please note that the loads are grouped at the bottom of the interaction diagram, meaning that the wall is strong in compression, but not as strong in bending. So most of these type of walls will fail in flexural capacity rather than uh, actual capacity. At the bottom, we can see a blow up of the uh, bottom area of the wall. So we can see in a larger scale the loads uh, in the interaction diagram. As you can see, it's very easy to design a bearing wall in as the concrete, the program generates the corresponding diagrams for a, a shear moment and axial, and also generates interaction diagram to compare the loads applied to the wall. If the loads are inside the usable area of the interaction diagram, the design is okay. With this, we conclude the presentation on the design of bearing walls. Please subscribe to the channel if you want to receive notifications in the future regarding similar videos. Thank you for your attention and we'll see you next time.